they uh, uh, were, were, were a prize that one side tried to deprive from the other. And uh, the first series of pyramid wars uh, took place there. Uh, in that particular war, the two main protagonists were the main son of uh, Enlil, called Ninurta, and the main son of Enki, called Marduk. And uh, in that war, uh, it was Ninurta uh, who was the victor, and uh, his victory was commemorated in some cylinder seals and other depictions. Uh, this was his uh, symbol, uh, the, uh, the eagle, and this was his victory's uh, depiction, how, <coughs> how he won the war over the two pyramids. And uh, another depiction where you see actually all three pyramids. And this, by the way, is another uh, uh, of the proofs of which I have many and I deal with it uh, extensively of who built the pyramids and when they were built, and that you see that already in Sumerian times, which preceded the pharaonic times by uh, uh, thousands of years, uh, the existence of the pyramids wa was already known. In one of the next wars uh, between uh, the various clans of the Anunnaki, uh, the Enlilites, the Enkiites, and in Urta, Marduk, etc., they resorted to the use of nuclear weapons. In 2024, almost 4,000 years ago, <coughs> the Anunnaki resorted to the use of nuclear weapons. There is a long text called the Era, Era Epic, E-R-R-A Epic, that describes the reasons, who did it, how they did it, what the, the number of nuclear weapons that were used in 2024. The unintended consequence of that was that uh, a wind blowing from the Mediterranean uh, brought what they called in those texts, they're called lamentation texts, uh, they called the evil wind that brought death, death to everything alive in Sumer. As the nuclear wind passed, reaching from the Sinai to Sumer, uh, it did not destroy anything. The lamentation texts lament that the stalls stand, but the, the animals that were there are all dead. The houses stand, but everybody who lived in the houses lies dead in the streets, on the roofs, etc. And that was the end of the great Sumerian civilization about 2024 BC. And in that one, unlike in the, pre, in the previous uh, uh, <coughs> wars, where Ninuta, the son of Enlil, was the victor, Marduk, Marduk, the son of Enki, was the victor, and that the, was the beginning of the rise of Babylon. Instead of Sumeria <coughs> and Enlil, and all the others, it was now the era and the time of Marduk and the Babylonians. Now we are starting to leave ancient history, and we are starting, or I'm starting, to take you uh, by the hand and lead you not only to the present, but also to the future, and to understand where history is taking us, when the dust, let's use that expression, the dust of the nuclear explosion and the <coughs> demise of Sumer settled, uh, several hundred years later, when perhaps passage was possible again after the <coughs> use of nuclear weapons here, uh, a major event took place. Uh, it is called the Exodus, the Exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. And the Bible says that after about 400 years, God remembered 
He said, oh, by the way, I forgot all about those people. <laughs> there was this guy, Abraham, and I promised him a certain land, the promised land. I made a covenant with him. And then I forgot all about it. But now it's time, it's time to uh, uh, fulfill my promises. And the Israelites left Egypt. And I didn't write it yet in any of my books, but I can tell you now that if I ever do, I will tell you that the starting point of the Exodus was the Sphinx, because the Sphinx, the Sphinx gazes precisely along the 30th parallel towards the spaceport. <laughs> there was, of course, no more spaceport there, but the mountains remained, and the mountain which held the various facilities was there, and the Bible calls it Mount Sinai, the mount, the mount in the Sinai Peninsula, Hara Elohim, the mountain of the gods of the Anunnaki. And once they were, <coughs> they had to continue. There was difficulty in going straight. They went around, but anyway, finally they got to Jerusalem. And what did they do once they got to Jerusalem? They built the temple to Yahweh on a platform that existed there. <clears throat> now, at about the time that uh, the Hebrews, the Israelites, <coughs> were uh, restoring the platform in Jerusalem, uh, other things were happening in the adjoining countries, especially those countries that followed uh, uh, Marduk, the Babylonian one. Uh, in Babylonia, <coughs> on cylinder seals, the sign of the cross began to appear. <coughs> in Assyria, the kings began to wear the sign of the cross on their chest. <coughs> the same happened in Egypt. Now these are all from around 1000 BC 900 B.C., 800 B.C., 700 B.C. <coughs> now, what does it mean? What, <coughs> what does it signify? Well, the sign of the cross, it may come as a surprise to my Christian friends, the sign of the, the, sign of the cross is not a new sign, and a new, not a sign uh, is developed or invented at the time of Jesus. This is a very ancient Sumerian sign, and each time that the planet, Nibiru, that usually was depicted as a winged disk, was on its way back to our vicinity, each time that the reappearance of Nibiru was expected, the depiction, the symbolism for Nibiru, for the planet, changed from the winged disk to the cross. So this one, for example, this is the one of the most ancient ones. Uh, this is another one. This is when agriculture was granted to mankind. And if you look at uh, uh, the, the orbit of Nibiru, <coughs> uh, roughly 3,600 years, so at some point uh, the planet is here or here or here or here or here or here, and at some point the anticipation of its return begins. <clears throat> and that's, I suggest, <clears throat> is when the sign of the cross uh, began to reappear. <clears throat> In one of my books, The Wars of Gods and Men, I deal with all the various wars that uh, took place, not only <clears throat> the very early ones, but in particular the ones that started to become more frequent and more ferocious as the return of Nibiru became closer and closer. <clears throat> it, it seems as if it became much more important uh, who would be in control, uh, who would welcome them, whose particular uh, aspect of religion <coughs> would be more predominant, uh, etc. <clears throat> <clears throat> 